In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving and merciful Father, we are grateful for this day that you have given us as a family of companion sisters. Lord, as we come to be in your presence, we ask you to guide us, to inspire us, and to draw us closer to you. So as what we are going to do now, we may do it for your glory and for our spiritual growth. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I prepared my presentation or my sharing with the spirit of the Carmelite background. Am I allowed to share that? Now, I want somebody to stand and tell us what do you like most about the Carmelites? that you have had before that you would wish you know to keep in your life what, what have you heard about the comrades at least one to share with us St. Therese I want you to take what kind of life St. Therese lived to be who she was and even who she is now to you and me by the way she's my patron saint she has get, how many of us have re, uh, read the story of the soul? Wow, then we need, that's, I think we need to get that. If one day I'm given an opportunity, that's what I will teach you, Eve. Because there's no way you can relate with St. Therese of the Church, uh, of, yeah, the Church of Jesus without reading that book. It's just one of its own symbol, but very deep in writing and expression. So, what do we know about all comrades that have existed? As you know, comrades, we are so many, you know, and here I'm not going to convert you to be Okam, but we are the fathers. So, you, you, we have all that it takes from 12 or 6 since the comrades was founded. So at least we have some information, we have some credits that we can hold to. And this is why I thought that if I share with you, maybe you may keep deepening your love to the Carmelite spirituality. Remember, by the way, even when people go to do their doctoral in spirituality, they are given a chance to choose Ada Franciscan, Camerate and what? So today, we take it as a privilege to go to the core of the Camerate spirituality. That one, even if you go to any country, to any place, to meet any Camerate, he will tell you what the Camerate spirituality is. And you know, the beauty of it is when you get the three aspects I'm going to share with you, you can easily now decide how you are going to leave it. They are simple. Prayer, fraternal living, and service. It's what we do every day. But in the Camerate spirituality, they have been given a deeper focus. That is what guides us each day. And that is what makes all of us get to realize there is something deeper in getting to understand who we are through prayer. Fraternal living, that is communal living. You are in a community. Are you not? And service, are you not involved in apostolate? Now, let's take this, what I call they are means of spiritual growth. The three. 
And we want to see how is this going to affect my personal life. I believe in one thing. There is no community, there is no church, if there are no individuals committed in their spiritual life. How many of us agree with me? There is no community, there is no congregation, there is no order. If we don't have individual who are fallen in love with their spiritual life. You can lack anything. You may not have all that other people have. But if you have deep connection with your spiritual life, you will never go wrong. You will never. So today I want to then work with you. And I pray that you become patient with me. Because I'm going to challenge you more than you expect. Okay? And the simple question I want all of us to start with is this. What is your vocation? Look at somebody next to you, ask them that question, discuss it in the next one minute, and you give me an answer. What's vocation? Now, can you tell us what your neighbor has told you about their vocation? Or what is vocation for them? By the way, did you know that sharing is part of charity? So, if sharing is part of charity, uh, yes, sister. Loving God and the neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Congratulations. My vocation is, no, she says this, at last I have found my vocation. My vocation is love. I have come to come to love and pray for the priests. Wow. Now, is that near to what your neighbor told you? It's good to say it, but ask them, do you leave it? Do you leave it? You know, sometimes we find ourselves, we have, like now, I don't know who formed you or when you went through your formation, what you were told. Who can have such personalized definition that they are ready to leave? You know, one of the things that makes us become lukewarm in our spiritual life is lack of conviction. We go through systems. Nikama unaingia ndani ya maji. Ukifika mwisho unasema at last all. No, 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 no. Let your servant. No, no, no. You say at last all powerful master. Let your servant go in pieces. When you have not lived your life fully. There is no way you are going to talk about being peaceful. How many of us have left, lived in a, a community that is uh, troublesome? Forget about peaceful. Because uh, we can count peaceful communities, especially in this pandemic. How many of us have been put into pieces because of the communities and the people we live with? Thank you, sister, for being do you know what makes people lack peace? Don't look back. Look at me. You know, somebody may think that you are looking at them. And, uh, do you know what makes people get into pieces? Sometimes I, I have told people, remember, if you tell me what your neighbor has done to you, I have no authority to go and uh, question them. But if you, at any time of your life you were in pieces, it's because you let God not take control of your life. You focused on human 
and what human beings were saying about you and you forgot you had answered to one person that you will serve. There is no one of us will say that in serving people you would ever satisfy their desires. There is no one. Even me today, I know when I finish, there are some of you, you will not like me forever. It's okay. You know, that's how life is. And if all of you like me, then there is a problem. The problem will be, I will not tell you the truth. If I challenge you, some of you will not like me. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, please. Be patient with Father. So, what am I trying to say? What is my vocation? Personalize that question. What is my vocation? You can write the question. What is my vocation? I want to pour from another key comrade called Edith Stein. This was a convert. But she was a, a lecturer, a philosopher, not even a Christian. But when she read the works of St. Therese of Aphira, she realized something that was deeper, that in her search for answers, she could not get it until she read the works of St. Therese of Aphira. And she comes now to share with us today in our writing saying, vocation has three branches. One, personal vocation. In this, she talks about the traditional understanding of vocation, where the first vocation you knew is what? Which vocation did you know first? Marriage. Who doesn't come from that vocation? By the fact you are seated here, the first vocation you should be conscious about and grateful of is marriage. The sacrifice that our parents took to fall to each other that I will love you in good and bad until the product of you came and many more years after. The second vocation then is a consecrated life. We were introduced by our own parents that you can go to be consecrated to become a servant of God and his people. But the problem is, some of us, instead of being consecrated, we are concentrated. Ask your neighbor, what are you concentrated of? Have you ever seen people who are concentrated? And the third one, that is currently being witnessed, is a life of single. There are people who have decided not to be religious nor married. But this one, I want always, wherever we are, we correct people. There is nothing like single with children. Or you have sired children somewhere, then you still claim you are single. No. We have people who have chosen to live alone. Single means what? How many of us have friends who say, I'm a single mother. But were we not born with one mother? I've written, by the way, a book on that. Sometimes we mislead people when we don't live up to our commitment. So today, when we realize that is the old personalized response of vocation, 
But that is not enough with St. Edith. She talks about occupational vocation. What are you occupied to do? Maybe you are a teacher, you are a nurse, you are a farmer, like Brother Lawrence. A man who joined the comrades and said, me, I would want to spend my life in the kitchen serving the brothers. How many of us go to the kitchen and cook and the food we cook? Nekama Peter Hubs for the Passover. You, you, you just want to peace the community. And how many of us, when we cook, there is no food left? By the way, do you know where, where God has gifted you? Where do we always compete with each other? Have you ever seen competition among you? Have you? Why? Imagine there's a, a day you thought that if you go to do what the other sister does, life would be better. And when you try to do what they were doing, only to find that it, it was your way to hell. You are still in that stagnation because of the wrong choice, because of competition. Have you ever seen in the communities that they don't progress because sisters are competing with each other, but they cannot compete going to the chapel? <laughs> what does that mean? I, I will look at the life of 12 people living together, competing to love. Such that, such that your community will be exemplary to every other community. Your congregation will be, you know, you, people will just point you out because of your unique way of living. What is your occupation? Four years ago, I decided to occupy myself sharing my thoughts. And I said, maybe there are so many people I may not reach to. So I made a vow to myself every day to write 1,000 words. And that has seen me publish five books. And probably this year I'm going to publish two more. Becoming a leader who leads in listening. And the three options. What I just said. But that is, the three options is a, a book I'm writing of reflections for 30 days retreat with a comrade background. Recently I published Grow During Your Dark Moment. I have eight days retreat in it. When you just follow the eight days, you just feel my presence there guiding you. And if you listen to what is shared there after eight days, you will find something different. What is your occupation? Can you ask that question again? Write it in your notes. What is my occupation? Am I occupied in gossiping, in demeaning, in criticizing, in calling people names? Or am I occupied in loving? Because you can never give me anything or you can never sacrifice anything until you find you what you have. You can never. You can never. The third option or branch of vocation, according to Edith Stein, is the Christian vocation. Who is seated here who is not a Christian? How do we get to participate in the Christian vocation? We have responded to the followers of Christ. In fact, this is the first vocation we get that streams from our baptismal rite. When we agreed 
to let our own thoughts or ways of life to follow the Christ, the Savior. And when we keep doing small things in an extraordinary way, then we build that vocation. I want to challenge you. Do you treasure your vocation as a Christian? Imitation is limitation. Unless it's the imitation of Christ. Imitation is limitation. When you try to imitate someone, you limit your potential of becoming who God has created you. Unless you imitate him who is the perfect example of the Father. Of the Father. So today, I want to follow the words of St. Edith Stein when she said, to be united with God in a continual communion of life, that is the highest form of life to which one can be called. To which one can be called. It is the vocation of every individual human soul. It is the vocation of the church. In other words, we all participate in the vocation of having continual union with God. How conscious am I about that vocation? There is no way you can ever think of becoming a comrade if you don't value being in the presence of God. Full stop. In fact, comrades, we define prayer as being in the presence presence of the one who loves you most, St. Therese of Afira. St. Francis will say something else. When St. Francis is with the poor, then that is his best form of prayer. But I know one thing, you can never be companions unless the two of you or the three of you walk and do something that has got common goals. Last time I think I challenged you when you talk about your companions. And we always see people going alone. Companions. Hey, companions, are you there? Tell me how you, you have been living as companions. Who is your best companion here? Hey, write down that. Who is your companion? Right? First of all, a companion where? Within. Charity begins. And if they, is there, you are going to be companions, what are you focused on? Like now, I think this is one of the things I've always talked to you, leaders of religious life. Communities will never work unless you take consideration when you appoint these people to live together. Are you helping these people to support each other? Or are you just starting a fire that will never end? Have you ever seen people going together only to expect a scandal? Look at somebody next to you and ask, will you be the source of the scandal in your community? At least, I like the way you have seated two, two companions, but I'm very sure you would not make a mistake to sit with somebody that uh, opposite of companion. Hey, Moromlancheka, opposite of companion, adversary. You know, I know. The way you have sat here, two, two. He. If I was allowed to mix you and say, now sit. Now, Changanya Pamoja Lafni Anza Kwambia, companions, Christ sent two pi. Who can tell us here and bear witness that they have been going two by two? And you know what? The way we are is a reflection of our friends. 
Tell me who you are your friends. Tell me who you are your friends. When things go wrong in our lives, I would never blame you. I would blame your friends. You know, there's people can dig a grave for you and pile you six feet and put a concrete so that you cannot come back again. Tell me who you are your friends and I will tell you who you are. So, let, let me go then on a deeper level to talk about the vocation to pray. The call to be a prayerful woman that is very key to the Carmelite spirituality. St. Teresa Pit of the Trinity, as a Carmelite saint, says this A Carmelite is a soul who has gazed on the crucified who has seen him offering himself to his father as a victim for souls and has understood the passionate love of his soul and has wanted to give herself as he did. In other words, when you have realized that there is something powerful from the crucified, him. Why did he go to be crucified? For God so loved the world that he did what? Again, if you don't teach the world to love, please then change your name. Change your name. And do you know what? You will never grow in your way of love if you think that you are going to start to love the neighbor outside there and fail to love your sisters in the community. We have been called to come and be witnesses to that love right there. What? One thing I know that is better in this life and can work, a big heart. Now, one to ten, how big is your heart? Give yourself a mark. That's why we say men normally use the head. But women use what? But these days it's different. Women have turned to be like men to use their head. They no longer love. That's the why the world is in chaos. That's why the world is in chaos. Even the church. When we don't love from the heart, we don't transform. We don't know how to pair with each other. We don't know why we should sacrifice to give life. You know, sometimes I look at religious, me included, the way we are arrogant. Especially because we don't have direct responsibilities. Look at somebody of your age, the way they are taking care of their families and their children. And look at yourself, the way you just to come to the community and behave. Do you think a woman of your age should behave the way you behave? Did I say something? Do you, how many of you are, are close to your age mates? Who are family people? Do you think women of your age behave the way you behave in communities? There is something I always tell people. Never treat grown-ups as children in the name of obedience. How many of us have wanted everyone to obey and do what we tell them? And how often will you realize that you are misreading the community by what you are telling them to do? Humility is when you are able to ask for help. Sisters, can you help me? Even if you are the, in charge, 
can you have to involve others in decision making? That's why that book, by the way, when it comes out, grab a copy and read. Become a leader who leads in listening. Become a leader who leads in listening. It will change your life. Don't wait to be in the position of a community in church for you to start living your life. You will be a slave forever. Be a leader of your life first. Make it orderly. Then it will be like a flower that in the morning is closed, but as the sun comes, it opens up and its beauty is seen. Some of us have been like this. Can you do like this? When we are stingy, we think. When you are like this, when you have a heart like this, na unakuwa mgumu kama kangumu. And instead of using your hand to bless, to empower, you kill. This is a weapon. Kuna watu wengine tumeenda karate ukikongwa na wao ngumi hata akiwa ni mwanamke hapa my friend tutakuchukulia matare ukipaatika usiende hiyo section nyingine <laughs> ukuje to heal how many of us have poked people out of our lives and we are still companions so Elizabeth of the twin says this and on mount carmel in silence, in solitude, in prayer that never ends. For it continues through everything. The Carmelite is already living a sieve in heaven by God alone. By the way, do you know that no one of us was born a saint? We are all in the making. And you know that somebody next to you is the, a candidate of saint good. What are you doing to make them saints? What are you doing? How many times have you killed the passion of the people to become saints? You have robbed them the opportunity of becoming God's instruments because of the wrong focus that you have had. Pope Francis reminded the Carmelites in 2013 during our channel chapter he quoted what Pope Benedict addressed to the Carmelites in 2007 saying faith's inner pilgrimage towards God begins in prayer it's only in the Carmelites we know our pilgrimage to God starts in prayer. The same words that he uttered in 2010, that is Pope Benedict, again to the Carmelites, reminding them that we are responsible to teach the world to pray. If you are a Carmelite and I look at you, you have any variation and you, I cannot learn anything about prayer from you. It's unfortunate. Then the Holy Father goes on to say, you speak of yourself as contemplatives in the midst of the people. If it is true that you are called to live on the heights of Carmel, in fact, when we talk about Carmel, we talk about the presence of God. Mount Carmel meant, or wherever you hear somebody say, I'm on Mount Carmel, I'm in the presence of God. This time you are not going to Palestine to meet God. The Mount Carmel is right in our hearts. So then, it is also true that you are called to witness in the midst of the people. And that's why you are companions. Now, you are taking this deeper living of prayer life right in the midst of the people. 
But we can never show example to people if you have not lived it. If you have not lived it. If you cannot spend some time in your personal prayer. If you have never guided even one person to appreciate what prayer is. The Holy Father continues. Prayer is that royal road that leads to profound mystery of the one and the triune God, but it's also the narrow pathway to God in the midst of the people. By the way, don't, don't fight to be thousands if you have no conviction in this narrow road. Look at how many people will want to create quiet time in their lives. You know, like uh, every day, those of you who follow me, I send, now I've moved to send audio reflection every day. It takes me one hour to prepare what I'm going to share. I listen to the word of God, then I listen to myself. When I've shared in a recording, I listen again, what am I saying to someone somewhere? What am I saying to someone somewhere? We need to be conscious of that. We need to cultivate that attitude. Because there's one thing I can remind you. You will never change your life until you have a positive mental attitude. And the opposite is true. You will destroy your life with negative mental attitude. There are people who have been sick for years, but because of their commitment, the best examples in trace of the child Jesus, she was sickly. She only lived for nine years in the convent, but she never lost the focus on him. Do you still want to be comrades? Or are you still disconnected? In fact, the Holy Father continues to remind us, today perhaps more than in the past, it is so easy to allow ourselves to be distracted by the cares and worries of this world and succumb to false idols our world is fractured in so many ways that the contemplatives unites and powerfully builds the call to unity. It's only those who keep the company of God, who keep guessing on the crucified, who keep seeing their brethren as God's daughters and sons who can find unity. Do you know sometimes we can be weak, we can lose support, but it can never be worse as when we fail to support each other. Do you know life can be meaningless when you, you have no one on your side and still you survive? Because you are still sacrificing to help someone. But do you know the worst is when everyone has refused to support you, then you refuse to support yourself in the head. There are people who are injected with the corona that kills the cells of the head. You are negative. There's nothing about you. Forget about people. By the way, if you find that you are negative with people you live with, you have that seed planted right in you. Trust me. Negativity, anger, revenge is not, you know, look at this. You can dislike me, but am I bothered? 
You have the choice. You like me or you? It's okay. But what about when I don't love or like what I do? You go to the mirror, instead of seeing yourself, you see the other. Ah, sisters, don't do that. Do you? So, having said about that kind of deeper consciousness of living a prayerful life, let us talk about fraternal living. That is communal living. And I want to use Titus Pransman, that is another comrade who wrote, Mysticism is a special union with God. That is man and God, you and God. Whereby the man or the woman or us, we become conscious of the presence of God. And on his part, also unite himself with God. Titus Plansma says this, when we realize this movement that uh, we have, we grow inward because of the presence of God. When you become conscious that God is within you, it kind of lights up the real you. And that helps you then to realize the giftedness from God. People like St. Therese of the Child, Jesus, young as they were, they had not studied so much. They had just the basic knowledge. Yet she could teach what now we call the theology of surrender than any other theologian can teach. She took it from her own experience. She was left with the father. Now, when she writes most of the gestures she uses, that I will always be crying, crying, following my mother upstairs. Even if I reach downstairs and I cannot climb up, I will stay there crying until my father who is on upstairs hears to come and pick me up. That is normal for another person to experience that. Have you ever seen a kid crawling up the stairs? No. They would fall. Especially unless they are well or friendly. Stairs are an obstacle for anyone. But how did she elevate her mind in that obstacle? Her hope I believe, I trust that the Father who is upstairs will hear. When we have grown inside what Titus says, the fruits come out. They are experienced either to our communities, to our friends, to our families, and the rest. To our apostolate. You know, when I started doing this, right now I have 4,000 followers on WhatsApp apart from those who follow my website. Because I said, I want to talk to people to change their lives. But not as more to talk to them as to listen to them, to help them connect the pieces of their lives to attain what God has created them for. To listen. I've chosen to serve in listening. I'm developing my skills each day to become a better listener than one who gives instructions. How often do you listen to yourself? How often do you listen to yourself? In the Laudate Si, the document written by Pope Francis, he says this, Christian spirituality proposes an alternative understanding of the quality of life and encourages a prophetic and contemplative lifestyle, one capable of deep enjoyment free of the obsession 
with consumption. We need different religious traditions and also in the Bible it is the conviction that less is more. Wow. Less is more. That is very powerful. In a world that wants to accumulate, gather everything around itself. We suffer because we are being suffocated with whatever we have piled around us. We are not ready to share what God has given. Do you know even there is some knowledge you have how you can change even your community but you have never shared with your sisters? Do you know that you are able to see your sister, she has this problem. She needs to be listened to. She needs to be channeled for her to come to realize herself. And you know some of us, we have done the worst. We have produced photocopies in communities. By the way, who, who in your community looks like you? Or does things like you? Were you sent to the communities to produce people like you? Like the cup on paper? Or were you sent to communities to be in charge and let people be? What type of a person are you? Look at somebody next to you. Look at them. Don't, don't say anything. What type of a person are they? Are they people who mold, who changes life, who empowers, who transforms, or are they people who demeans, who kills? You know, did you know that uniformity is an enemy of creativity, hence growth? When we were given that habit, we were not told to walk the same way, to cough the same way, to eat the same way. Were we? A habit is an external garment. In fact, every time I bless the, we have now the habit for the lay people. We say it's an external garment that shows the devotion and the commitment to our lady an external garment. What is inside us is more important than the external. So do you believe that whatever you have is what the world needs to change? Do you believe? Do you believe that God has created you in a unique way so that you can carry that community that congregation, that apostate to the next level, do you believe? Do you know your potential? Are you passionate of it? Will you complain that what God has given you is not the right gift? What gift will you want to get from God? What gift will you Pope Benedict the 16 wrote saying, When we come to believe in God's love, in these words that Christians can express the fundamental decision of his life, being a Christian is not the result of an ethical choice, of lofty idea, but the encounter with an event a person which gives life a new horizon and a deceitful direction. The love of God that is stated in John chapter 3, verse 16. As Christians, forget now about religious women, unless we come and build our lives around that, you know, look at, how many of us remember your best ex uh, experience with your mother? Especially when, you know, you were tiny, 
doing stupid things? How do your mother treat you? Even now you are old, if you have your mother around, when you do stupid things, how would your mother treat you? Mothers will never forget that we are their children. They will never. But we forget easily that we need to give life. We need to have spiritual children. When you have none, you become like a parent woman. Allow me to use that word. You can be physically parent, but it's worse when you are parent in your head and heart. Have you ever seen parent women going to adopt children and showing them the best of any mother can show? But how many of us behave like stingy parent women? In other words, when you talk about that, is when you are heartless. You are not concerned about giving life. And that's why the congregation gets stagnant. Oh, yes. We can never grow much pride with people who are stingy and lifeless. Look, we meet people in their apostrate. The people you meet, do they admire the way you do things? Ama wanaanza kusema na huyu alitoka wapi? Ama wanasema thank God he alichagua maisha ya utawa. Angewezana na nani? Have you ever had some people I hope you don't hear the people talking about that. They give God thanks that you chose to be a consecrated person, not consecrated. Because you will not make it in the society. A society needs people with big hearts. But did you know the likes of Mother Teresa, when you have a big heart, there is nothing can stop you from transforming the whole world. It is those small things we do with an extraordinary way that makes us be there. We need consciously to become aware of the five, in fact, six aspects now. How we can improve ourselves and be productive as religious men and women. Give life, number one. Become good stewards. Let us be conscious of the flock that has been left in our care. Let us never take for granted those people we live and serve. Because when you read Luke chapter 12, verse 42 to 48, a rich man left his household to his servants. And we are told, if the servant took the responsibility to take care of other servants in the absence of their master, give them what is their due, he will be rewarded when the master comes back. But what to him who takes advantage to molest, to mistreat the other servants? What will happen when the master comes? And the worst is the one who more had been given to them and they did nothing. Their punishment will be? Number two, we talk about being role models. She says this, when she was founding new houses, the sisters requested her to write for them the way of prayer. If you have read The Way of Perfection. Have you ever seen that? In the works of St. Teresa? She writes The Way of Perfection from her own experience. She shared these to her fellow sisters. Me and you, what are we having to share with our fellow sisters? Are we going to still keep saying we cannot deepen our conviction 
such that the way we will live it, it will influence others. Let me tell you this. We don't need reformation now. We need transformation. If you think that there is another congregation you will go and find it better than where you are, you are wrong. You need to transform your own for it to become what everyone else will look at and admire to follow. We need transformation and especially the transformation of the mind that is the greatest barrier in human living. You can be sick but the sickness cannot hinder you from living as a faithful companion. But you can be sick in the mind and everything else will stop until you go into your grave. I think even the grave you will not be peaceful until we really make great sacrifices to pray for you. You know, the greatest sin is what? Blasphemy. And what is blasphemy? The rejection of God's presence, especially in our lives. When we become sadists, when we cannot leave the love of God, we declare ourselves enemies of God. But when we live as disciples of love of Christ, we have something to share with the world in our little ways. And if there is something I need to remind you and you should cherish from today is to be yourself. Formation is not meant to create uniformity. No. Formation is about empowering people to be creative, to focus on the same goals and live them. Wow. Formation is not about uniformity. You are not going to put all these heads together and they think and do the same things at the same time. No. We want to allow these people put in their heads and in their hearts the love of God and allow them express it within this setup. Yet the constitution should be a source of action giving us a direction. And this direction, by the way, it doesn't come from one person. It comes from all of us. And the beauty that we find in the Camerate spirituality from the Camerate rule, the lay people went to Mount Carmel, they went with a proposal to the patriarch of Jerusalem by then, Alpert, of Jerusalem, they asked him to endorse their way of life. We can help you to become companions, but until you live as companions, we have nothing that the world can borrow from you. Yeah. You have to take it to your heart, live it, share it, make it one. And that is what makes the change in this life. Number three, if we want to attain what we want, we need to make the difficult decision. Recently, we heard of the Holy Father going to Iraq. And Pope Benedict was asked what did he think about that trip. He said, I think it's a very important trip Unfortunately, it comes at a very difficult time that also makes it dangerous trip for security reasons and also because of COVID-19. There is also an unstable situation in Iraq. I will accompany Francis with my prayers. Wow. Now, what was going in the mind of Pope Francis? He said, this is the moment I make that difficult decision. In 2013, when Pope Pendix resigned, do you know up there, people up to now, they have never accepted that he's not the Pope? 
Do you know there are some of you who have left leadership position, still you think that you are the superiors of the houses in your head? You cannot allow somebody else to lead because you think that they are not like you or they are not holy like her. Making difficult decisions. And you know one of the difficult decisions you can make today is to become an exemplary. Live a life in a manner people can look at you and admire. But you will waste your whole life when you cannot even impact even your own self. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Number four, how do we create impact? Putting families first. There is a disease, and I want to challenge it. When we left our homes, what we were we told? Now, you have to sacrifice your family, let them go to evangelize. We were told by this consolator priest. He said when they left Italy to go for missions, they were always told, missionaries are to go far away to evangelize. But when he became a scriptural scholar, read the Gospels, he came out and said this. The call to become witnesses of the Gospel should start from where we are. Where do you come conscious of the vocation first? Is it not in your family? And how many times have we sacrificed our families without having somebody to guide them? In the literal ways we can. Did we ask you to go and bring your families into the convent? But as a leader, if you can be able even to speak to them positive information, share with them, encourage them, don't you think that you could change their lives? It's because we didn't have proper family background. We come to communities, we don't find the sense of belonging. The sense of belonging doesn't come from heaven. You can never see this is your sister, this is your brother, unless you have that bond of a family. A family is where everyone else sacrifices to allow the others be. Do you know that our sisters, our brothers have got some needs we, we could have just gone in solidarity, joined them, to encourage them, they would have changed their life. But do we know that in telling people to be disconnected from their families, they don't have the source of hope? If you want to know, go and get an orphan who was mistreated because of losing their parents in the early age. Then you will learn. We can only build a family in our congregation when we see back and fire you and appreciate our families. Without, we are Africans, and this is what we need to realize. It can never change. Those are the values we need to carry with us wherever we go. It's like if we got married, you forget your people. What kind of uh, a parent will you become? I think sometimes we do what is not right in the name of formation and obedience. How come, by the way, when our superiors get issues, they lose their beloved, the whole community will pack things, fill the cars, and travel distances. But if your poor sister there, she can lose relatives, parry them, and not even one of us can call even to check on her. You are the leader of the community. You sit there. You never ask sisters, how are your parents doing? Can we pray for them? Can we go and visit them? How, com uh, how far have we grown as companions? You can tell me. Number five. Seek true happiness. We are in a world, especially after this COVID, 
People were locked and they locked their hearts. People are scared of each other. But until we learn to sacrifice and do something for others, we will never go back to live to serve. Dr. Adria Ponias wrote on, the, on February 23rd, saying, Our obsession with happiness is making our kids miserable. Correcting the illusion about pain and happiness, she wrote. Do you know, happiness is not found in just saying everything is okay. But you can be happy even when things are tough. But what does the world preach? When everyone is at your service, that's when you need to be happy. Now, I want to console you with these words. Happiness is not from outside. If you didn't know. You are in charge. If you are not happy, don't blame anyone. Blame yourself. Turn to your neighbor and tell them that. If you are not happy as a religious woman, don't blame. Blame who? Yourself. Some of us, we have thought that going out there, people will make us happy. But unless we take happiness to people, there will be no true happiness. So I want to encourage you to participate in the hearing of the wounded societies that we are living. Allow people to participate in what I call number six, the source of true happiness, which is found in the deeper connection with our creator. When we get into that deeper union with God, then God himself will allow us to transform the people around us. That is the biggest sacrifice we need to make. That is the choice that we need to make, especially now. Ask yourself, how many people will need your attention to change their lives? in small ways. How many people will need your attention to change their lives? As we know, in organization, nothing can work unless there is cooperation and teamwork. Let us test our teamwork in our congregation. Christ chose the twelve and shared his mission with them. Let us ask among ourselves, how many of us are prepared to be leaders of tomorrow? And how many of us, we sit like a bus going to Mombasa, si wako, si watafanya. As you wait for them to do it, what happens? Nothing happens. And how many of us will say, hey, I'm not able to lead, but someone else can do you will never lead people if you have not learned to lead your life. Full stop. Full stop. Whatever you want in life, if you see it, you can attain it. The only thing is, you need to go an extra mile, do what no one expects in that line of fulfilling what you have seen. What you have seen. One thing I know, when somebody dreams and shares their dreams, he allows others to join the dream, and at the end of the day, the dream will come true. But if you have a dream that you will never share, it will die within you, and nobody will never know whether you are the dream. The richest life is one of the opportunities to keep dreaming in serving the people of God in a unique way. Can we sacrifice to go an extra mile to give our best? I guess we can. And we should take this day, pray for it. So that when you have this dream, don't also become an obstacle, but let it be shared. You know, recently I started our, a group that I call Caring Listeners. 
I've trained even some sisters I know. So they have trained me and some lay people. We are developing an attitude of becoming a caring listener. We listen to people. You go to my website about what we do. There is spiritual accompaniment. We listen to help you connect with your life. But one thing we always keep in mind. Unless we listen until people feel they are hard, we have done nothing. The only way we can become caring listeners to transform the world is when I make you feel you have been hard. I want to send you with these words. Go, start listening to people. Allow them to be hard and God will bless the work of your hands. May God bless you and may you make it a reality, get someone to be your companion. Live an exemplary life in solitude, in silence, and in prayer. May God bless you all.